Oh, Harvest December. What is there for me to say about this game story visual novel thing? All right, first, if you just want to know if this is a good value for your money or whatever, I will say that it's something like $14 on the eShop as of my recording this, and you get 30 hours of reading out of it. So that's like 50 cents, a, 50 cents an hour, and if that's not a good value for a video game, I don't know what is. Next, there will be mild spoilers in this review, not review, retrospective, not retrospective thing that I'm, whatever I'm recording today right now. If you haven't read the entirety of Harvest December or watched my read through play, whatever I'm going to call that now, um, I suggest you do that if you have any intention of finding out how the story goes yourself. I'm going to try and not do any major plot spoilers but I'm probably going to end up giving away some mild details about how things go that you may or may not want to find out for yourself later. Okay, so as I said in, I think, January, I wasn't too thrilled with the story at first, but I figured that I'd post it on YouTube anyway because it was an organic, natural-ish first impression of the, uh, of the uh, preview December month, the month that composed the, uh, the demo. But later on, when I went to edit it and went to read it again, I became much more, uh, shall we say, invested in the characters and the story and the air conditioning just kicked on. I hope you couldn't hear that because I'm recording this narration in the summer and it's going to go up in December. But yeah, I actually can't point out exactly what it is that made me like the story and want to continue it and spend an entire year of my YouTube channel just doing that. Maybe if I were to go and read through more carefully or rewatch the footage or something like that, I would, uh, I would be able to pick up exactly what I liked about it the second time around. That's like the most useless thing ever that's been said in the game review. I like it, but I don't know why. Anyway, moving on, there's a couple bad things about the story that I wasn't too much of a fan of, and I'll get those out of the way first. So firstly, some parts just seemed unnecessary, like uh, some of, especially in later chapters, some of the Mizuho Toyama Adventure Squad shenanigans. Uh, some of those just seemed to drag on for way longer than they needed to. And as I've complained multiple times, I don't think I have to harp on this anymore. The Mayoi infomercial bits were just not funny the first time and not funny the fifth time either. Some parts were just not really annoying, but just kind of boring, like Takaki's ramblings on gods. Uh, I recently watched the extra credits episode on the three types of stories in video games. There's lore-driven, plot-driven, and character-driven. And this story was definitely character-driven and probably should not have tried to focus on lore as much as it did. If anybody wants to, if anybody hasn't seen that extra credits uh, episode, I think it was one of the better ones, and I'll link it in the description if I remember. And of course, the elephant in the room that I've complained about at the end of the story, well, maybe I wouldn't say it's the elephant in the room, but the elephant in general that I've complained about at the end of the story, I'm not a fan of people trying to make relationships work that clearly aren't working. And that applies to several places in the story. Um, again, trying to avoid major character plot spoilers. Guys, if your relationship with your girlfriend or boyfriend isn't working, it's not worth it. Don't don't try and make it work. Just save yourself. Admittedly, this isn't entirely Misaki's fault because Mashira did make some subtle, not so subtle threats about what would happen if Misaki backed out. And that makes things difficult and they're not entirely Misaki's fault for that. But still, in a, in a real situation, in a real world situation, don't put yourself through that, please. And again, that applies to multiple character pairings throughout the story. I don't know how things like this are viewed in Japan, admittedly, and it's also come to my attention that this is a not uncommon visual novel trope. The chaotic, borderline abusive girlfriend-boyfriend relationship thing. But still, don't put yourself through that if you can avoid it, please. Anyway, the good stuff. There's a lot of good stuff in this story. There's obviously, I would say that because I dedicated, like I said, an entire year of my YouTube channel to reading it. The comic relief was funny. And I can't believe that I'm starting with comic relief. This list is in no particular order. But the comic relief was funny, and by that I mean Mom. She is one of the most immature characters you will meet in a story of any kind, and it's still funny. It's not grating or annoying or anything like that somehow. And I like to say I have high standards when it comes to that kind of thing. The characters in general were pretty well written, I think. Uh, it's not limited to Mom, but uh, especially Ao, who was kind of creepy in when she showed up in April, but I think she was one of my more favorite characters later on. They were well defined. If you gave me a line from any particular character, I could probably tell you who said it, not because I've read the whole story twice, but because the characters were defined that well. And they changed throughout the story, too. I don't think Sine or 
I still don't know if that's how you pronounce S-A-N-A-E. Her and Masaki and even Yuki didn't behave the same as they did at the beginning of the story as they did at the end of it. I've read my fair share of literature over my lifetime and that's something that not all of them do, is have characters change from the beginning to the end and one of my high school English teachers actually said if that, if that doesn't happen, if the characters don't change from beginning to end, then your story does not resolve. It's not satisfying to read, and I think that's true, and that's something that definitely happens in this story, in Harvest December. Continuing on that theme, this is actually the first thing that I've read in a long time, and maybe the most significant thing that I've ever read, that actually makes me feel, like, really bad for a character. I'm not saying who, because like I said, I'm trying to avoid spoilers, and this definitely applies to multiple characters to varying degrees. But not even, like, Harry Potter has made me feel this bad for any particular character. Uh, just by what happens to them and what they go through, and admittedly, Harry Potter wasn't really trying to do that, but hey. it's still a battle of comparison, I think. Moving on from plot stuff, uh, the, the music was good. You couldn't hear most of it because I had the volume on very low when I was reading it because I didn't want it to interfere with my reading because I've had that happen in, in the past with uh, Let's Play stuff as the music drowns out my talking. But if you get the chance, I believe it's all available on the uh, Tales Tune YouTube account for free. And if you want to pay money for it on like Google Play and iTunes and stuff, I bought it on iTunes because I'm a, I, I'm not good with money. And I spent like a week just listening to it nonstop. And the super epilogue music, as I've been calling it, has been stuck in my head for about that long now, coincidentally. I don't know what it is with Japanese media and completely nailing the music, at least every time that I've been exposed to it, but good job, Tales Tune. And I forget exactly who is accredited in opening sequences for reading this, for writing the music, rather. Byakuya, I think? Anyway, the last thing that I'll say that perhaps impressed me the most of all is that this game story visual novel thing was actually safe for work, um, except for some mild swears here and there. And I actually didn't have to censor anything, as I was semi-expecting that I would back in the demo initial December chapter to get it safely on YouTube. Although I did uh, age gate one episode because I didn't want to take any chances because YouTube is finicky like that. But nothing explicit was shown, nothing hey. explicit was done in text. And considering that this is a visual novel, and visual novels, at least the ones that I'm familiar with, don't have the greatest reputation for being safe for work, and that considering that this one was rated M for sexual content on the eShop, that's impressive. I, don't, I may be the only one who thinks that I may be a little bit puritanical when it comes to this kind of thing, but nevertheless, I think that was a pretty nice surprise for me, at least as far as editing was concerned, because I really didn't want any more work editing than I already had doing 120 something videos. But anyway, as I like to do, I think I'll do a little retrospective on the Let's Play that I just finished doing. And strangely enough, this is actually a Let's Play that I did that I don't completely think was garbage. Uh, sure, I had trouble reading at some points, a lot of points, most of the points, but it was genuinely fun to do. I think a lot of my reactions to it were uh, organic and not uh, scripted or anything like that, like I would normally try to do in a uh, in a blind playthrough, read through, whatever, and probably better than I've done in other uh, games. Hello, Bravely Default. I like to think that the releasing it over the course of a year from December to December was one of the more original ideas that I've had in my life. That doesn't really reflect very well on me. But overall, I had fun doing it. Judging from some of the comments that people have left on them, I think other people have had a fun time reading it. Lapras, please continue incredulity. It was definitely a long haul. Took a lot of work, but overall I think it was fun and I'm glad I did it. And I'm satisfied with how it came out. And with that, I don't have anything else today. My name is Dragonite. I hope you all enjoyed Harvest December as much as I did. If you're still watching, listening, whatever, and you haven't read it, go do that. I do recommend it. Although I did may or may not have spoiled some important things to you. Also, if you like the artwork, I will, for no real reason, be compiling the uh, screenshots I use in the thumbnails without the thumbnail text on them and putting them up for download in the, the description of the video. If you just want like a rotating desktop background made of Harvest December footage, because I, uh, the artwork is another thing that I didn't mention that I did like, at least most of the stills. But I've been going on for long enough. Uh, my name is Dragonite. Thank you all for watching once again, and I will see you all later.